Hey everybody, James here from Plumber Parts OK UK. Welcome to another week. We're talking about showers, okay? Now this is a first. The first time I've seen a dual head electric shower. What we're gonna do is install it on this lovely bit of shower that we popped in in another video. We are gonna start off with a system that looks just like this, and then we're gonna end up with a working shower that looks just like this. Girls. We're going to talk about the electrical connections, we're going to talk about water connections, we're going to install it in real time, in a real situation, right in front of you now, so you can find out whether this is the right shower for you, and also if you're an installer, whether you want to recommend this to any of your customers. Please hit that subscribe button, guys. Please hit that like, please comment, and let's get on with this video, guys. It's going to be a good one. And remember, if there's one thing you've got to do, that's hold that. Say you soon. So this is going to be the shower that we're installing. This is a Myra Decor Jewel. I've not seen anyone actually do a electric shower with a dual head outlet. So what we're doing, we're kind of upgrading the electric shower design so it can go over a bath, but also can go in a wet room install like what we've got behind us here today. And it can go in a shower enclosure as well. But you've got that nice pan head, that rain effect, and also the handheld shower bit as well. Just a quick bit about these. I've actually got three of them here today. So we've got the silver decor one here. We've got a black decor one, and we've also got a white decor one. So all all of the decor styles that you guys might want are pretty much covered for, I'd say, in those three particular designs. But before we continue, let's have a very quick chat about what an electric shower is and what's different. Because this here looks like what you'd get for a bar shower or something because they've kind of crossed over and merged the two designs together. That might just be a quick thing if I just quickly describe for you what an electric shower is and what this particular system is doing before we continue. So you've got a standard bar mixer, which is a physical mixing device effectively sat on the wall. What happens is, is you've got hot in, you've got cold in, you've got a thermostatic control, which physically changes the mixture of the hot and cold water according to what temperature you want coming out, and then an on and off flow control as well. These can have a standard handset, or a pan overhead or both. Then we've got a digital mixer shower, a bit like the Myra mode. You can have multiple outlets on this, so you can have a shower handset, an overhead, and even a bath fill. What happens is, is you've had the hot and cold inlets go to a remote digital box where the water temperatures and water flows are mixed according to a digital controller remotely installed inside the shower. There's no physical mixing of water that happens inside the shower on this one. I've already done a video on installing the Myra mode, so pop back to our channel and check it out. And then we have the electric shower that we're installing today we have cold water mains being passed over a heating element that heats up the water on demand and then out of the shower handset the big difference about the Mara Decor Jewel is that not only do you have the shower handset but you also have the overhead pan as well <laughs> Right, so there we go, we've got that. Let's have a quick look and see what's in the box. Oh, my favorite bit actually, I always like doing this. Right then, so we open the beast up. First thing you're gonna notice is that you've got two sets of hoses. Now, one of these sets is to go into the bottom of our actual feed unit and our distribution valve, and one of these is to actually go to our shower heads. You can get longer hoses as well. If you speak to Myra, have a word with them guys, I've left their details below, and you'll be able to get longer hoses if you think you might have to have a shower head that's further away. Most importantly of all guys we've got our installation and user guide. Read all that. Then we've got our little riser here so we're just going to pop that on that there. Our shower heads and our nice big pan head as well. And then the important bit and also I just want to bring your attention to the fact that we've actually got an installation template on this. So we've got our fixing holes here already. We've got our inlet connection. We've got our live earth and neutral as well. And then under this we've also got the diverter module in here that we'll come back to in a second. And then under this the main beast itself. So just having a quick look at all the little features and that we've got here, you've got a 200 mil Deluge headset. Now this is the real different part really when it comes to the product we've got here, is the fact that we're actually gonna have one of these on an electric shower. This comes on a rotating arm, so we're gonna have much more versatility when it comes to when we come to install it. We've got a standard 90 mil hand shower, the old rub clean bits on the end there, so that's pretty cool. We've got a bespoke fittings kit, designed and engineered in the UK as well, which is always like, yes for me. We've got a diverter valve, and this diverter valve here was designed to go with this shower. Now, the importance of this is, imagine we're diverting to another head and somehow the water supply slows down a little bit 
bit. We're passing water, like we saw a minute ago, over an electrical element, and if that flow slows down, then you might have the risk of scalding. The great thing about this is you've got a properly designed diverter that's designed to go with this shower, so when you are diverting, there's no slowdown in flow, and therefore no risk of scalding. So, a bit of peace of mind there. You'll also see how the diverter will rotate to accommodate fittings from the left or the right. It's really cool. We've got lovely like chrome detailing, nice little bit of design there, and it's all easy clean, which is great because I've got really grubby fingers. When we actually look at the decor itself, the first thing that I just want to tell you is this can be retrofitted over loads of different Myra products as well, which is always handy when you find you've got a shower manufacturer who thinks about that sort of thing. It can get a bit annoying if you go to, you know, replace a shower thing and suddenly you've got a screw hole sticking out the side of where it used to be. Just looking on the underside here as well, this is where our cold water main is going to be coming in. In. And I just really want to draw your attention to the fact that we've got a lot of space in here. I like to have quite a bit of space. This is going to be a nice neat install. So what we're going to try and do is have everything going into the back. And then the only bit that will be coming out the bottom will actually be our feed just down here. So this will be a nice neat install. But just want to draw your attention to the fact that we've got a lot of space in here to do work. Um, if we have a big elbow or something like that in there, we know we can get it in. Also, we're going to have 10 mil cable coming into this because this is a 10.8 kilowatt beast. Cable can take up quite a lot of room, so when you're thinking about this, make sure that you've got enough room for your cable. Talking about electrics, I'm not going to 100% show you how to do the electrics in this video. You should always get a qualified, competent electrician to come in and do all of that work. That being said, it isn't very difficult, but that is as far as we're going to go on the electric side of things. And also, just saying as well, the dual outlet version is only available on the 10.8 kilowatts because if you have a lower kilowatt rating obviously we've got a higher water flow coming out and you're going to need those extra kilowatts to get the water up to temperature so your wife can have a ridiculously hot shower which according to this meme or mem as I like to say that we made a couple of weeks ago on our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter guys I think you can all agree with that one there ladies for some reason love much hotter showers. Why don't we get down and install this beast now? You guys can have a look over my shoulder. We'll have a little discussion about why I've done certain things. We can talk about certain little aspects of the installation itself and just watch me install this shower. They're very quick and very easy to do. Right then guys, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is ascertain which position you want your shower to be in. Often, if you're doing a changeover, you know, this bit doesn't really count because you're gonna be taking off an old electric shower and then putting another one on. But really, this is where I roughly want it to be. So I'm just gonna cut in a little bit and get my spirit level and just score myself a reasonably just a straight line. And make sure as well that you refer to regs when it comes to drops of shower heads, because we don't want shower heads to drop into baths, toilets, or basins. Make sure wherever you choose to put your electric shower unit, you'll be able to reach where you want to put your riser with the small hose. Remember as well, you can get an extended hose if you need to. Also, for those interested in the single outlet variants, they're available in 8.5 and 9.5 kilowatt. The next bit is really easy because of the handy template that is part of the box when you buy one of these Myra showers. So look, we've got the template just here. It says, please tear here. This is the bit where I don't tear it very well and it goes everywhere. <laughs> this is what Emily has a go at me for when like an Amazon parcel turns up, I just go absolutely bonkers. So there we go. Now we've got our installation template, nice straight edge there. Pop holes through all the drill areas with a pencil and then you can line up the side of your template with the straight edge you've just put on the wall mark all your holes on the wall ready for drilling. This is also a good time as well to note where you're going to be bringing through your cold feed and also your electrical supply. Don't have the inlet elbowing straight into the inlet connection. Come out either below or above, then drop down and then elbow in. Best thing to do as well, for me I always say, come in nice and low. So here will be where my water is. There's no harm in marking water. We'll also then know exactly where our electrical connections come in. It's usually a good idea just to bring them in a bit below or a bit above. Then they can work their way around and it also gives anyone who comes along in the future, if they do need to do any work on this, they've got a little bit of slack on the wire and then they can sort of flop that off, undo things and make sure that they can fix whatever problem may arise, that sort of thing. Just, just think about the person who's going to be coming in after you, it's really important. Use the right drill bit that's adequate for whatever you're going into. Today we're going into a shower wall board. But if you're using tar bits, obviously make sure you know how to use your tar bits as well. And the same goes for piloting and drilling the holes for your plugs too.
There is, of course, another way that you can do this and mark these lot up. You can get your actual water through. This is for when you've actually got a supply in already. And then you can just pop this on down here like so, and then use a pencil to mark your holes and then drill your holes then. When it comes to the fixings, use the fixings that are supplied, but I like to use the ones that I'm always used to. It's just a plumber thing. I like to use the screws that I always buy. It's just how it is. You'll notice here that I'm using my impact driver to do up these screws. I'm very, very familiar with this tool and I know how to use it. That being said, what I'm doing is actually screwing up nice and lightly and then for the last bit, I'm just using a hand screwdriver. So guys, now that we've got this screwed on the wall, I just want to say we've got a slot there, a slot there, a slot there, and then an actual standard hole there. Make sure when you're tightening them up that you don't use an impact driver all the way or a drill. Just make sure that you tighten up finally with a hand screwdriver. Just because we're going onto plastic shrouds here and they can sometimes just split a little bit. Once you've done that, just tighten up these two connections here. Make sure that you grab them with a set of grips as well to make sure that you don't overstress it. Now, one thing I just want to say as well, do not over tighten these fittings. Remember, we're going onto a plastic spigot here, so you want to make sure that you just do them up nice and soft. Once you've done that, turn the water on and make sure that you've got no leaks before moving on to the next stage. Without making light of it, the electrical connections are really effectively like wiring up a massive, heavy going plug. But there are rules and regulations that you have to follow further back down the line. Electric showers draw a large amount of current. They need to be properly tripped and RCD'd and also have a pull cord switch inside the shower room. For these reasons, you will need to get a qualified electrician to come in and do this side of the installation. Once you've got this bit done, seal up around the holes with some mastic. Right then, make sure that these are opposite to each other. And then we can pop this on. Securing the cover is easy with two screws at the top and one screw at the bottom. Right then guys, so we've got our Myra Beast up on the wall now. I've got the water on and tested. I haven't switched the electrics on yet. There's no point doing that. Now onto the really fun stage. And this is brilliant because we're now going to install our dual riser. <laughs> First thing I'd say you do is just build up the riser itself and then you can get a good idea of the heights that you want to have on this and all that sort of stuff. Make sure that the red conical is the one that goes into the bottom of the actual bottom of the shower unit and you only need to do this up hand tight. Now remember what I said earlier on, this can actually go in sideways which is really handy. So you can have it going in like that with our riser coming up out the top. It makes it like so it's quite a nice versatile unit. So the good thing is now is you can actually push this on. Now you'll see what it says here, insert until line is hidden. And you just push that on like so. And then from there you've got a rough idea of what your install is going to look like and sort of where you're aiming to be. So now I know that, I am actually going to pop my centre line just there. Now we can measure out and get this installed. And then this piece here, will actually push on and actually gets nice and firm straight away. So what we need to do is get this firstly on our centre line, which we've just got marked here, and our bottom line that's just marked there as well. So I'm just going to screw that on now. Again, I use an impact driver to get my screws started, and then I use a hand screwdriver just in case to nip them up at the end. Once our wall plate is on, we can fix our diverting valve onto the plate, and then use a hand screwdriver to tighten up the retaining screw at the back to make sure it's fixed nice and sturdily. You can now insert the remaining riser into the fixed diverter valve at the bottom and then use a spirit level to make sure that you've got it nice and level and that you've also got the exact fixing hole at the top. I'll use my spirit level a few more times during this process to make sure that everything's okay because if this is out, everything's gonna look awful. I prefer this method because it means less marking on the tiles themselves and less cleaning off when we're finished. Once you've got your holes drilled, fix the wall plate to the wall. It's a complete doddle, really easy to do. Now you can properly install and fix your riser, putting the decorative shroud over the fixing, and then you're ready to put the pan head and shower handsets on. Word of advice for you, once you come to putting the head on, put on the head now. Just get that tightened on now before you actually put the arm on because it just makes life a bit easier for you, really. You should not have to get a set of grips and do that up, but you never know. So look, that's gone up lovely, that is just like that. And then also, because you're not gonna be able to see it in a minute, just pop the grub screw in and just give that a thread or two now. And then when you go to put this on like we are now, so that's in already, pop it up there. 
A little thing as well that you're not going to hear about is the fact that they actually supply extra grub screws and extra O-rings for that, which is something they don't need to do. And it's nice that, uh, that they think about that because we plumbers can lose things. <laughs> I'm just doing the back of the little grub screw now. Wait till that's nice and tight. Make sure that the grub screw isn't too far in as it can damage the seals if it's over tightened. The head direction can actually be adjusted. So for instance, if the riser was actually in the corner of the shower, we'd be able to move the head so it was diagonally pointing out and then do it up. There we go. And that's our head and our riser in position. All we need to do now is attach the handset, which is so easy. If you don't know how to put a hose on a shower handset, you probably really shouldn't be installing one of these on your own anyway. But I'd just like to say the actual shower hose themselves are really nice because they've got like, this non-kink sort of function on them. It's just really, really easy to do. And there we go, guys. Install's complete. Right then, guys, so we've got this beast installed. It's now very important that we read these commissioning instructions. So what we do, turn temperature control to the cold position. Power control to low, which is just there. Switch on the electricity supply. Power on, guys. Now we press the start stop button. Oh, now we've just got to wait for water to come through, guys. So we've got water flowing freely through. We're going to give this a good 15 seconds. It's really important that you properly consult the instructions when it comes to installing and commissioning any product. And it's especially important when you're doing it with an electric shower. So make sure that you follow the instructions word for word. Once I got the unit fully commissioned, I knew that everything was working. There's only one other thing I do before handing over to the customer. And that is to make sure that I cleaned off all my hand marks and to make sure that the whole area was nice and clean. And as a plumber, when the customer comes in and sees the new install that you've just done, hopefully they'll think it's great. There you go guys, all installed, all finished. You followed me all the way from unboxing this product to fixing it on the wall, to installing the cold water and the electrical supply and putting the riser on. And look at what we've got now. An electric shower with a nice smart dual shower head, one being a 200 mil deluge and one being your standard handset. Just look at how easy it is to switch from the deluge head to the handset using that innovative sleek diverter valve. It's worth recommending that Myra do not recommend using the deluge headset and the handset at the same time. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please click that subscribe button, please comment below and please like this video as well. If you want any more information, I've left links to Myra's website in the description and top comment below. Have a great weekend guys and I'll speak to you soon. Hold day. So guys, did you quite honestly think I was going to install all this and not get my usual beach garms on? If you haven't seen them before guys, after I click my finger, prepare to be not only amazed, but like how has this fashion not taken off yet? Beach garms, starting now. There we go guys, blades fit. Hell yeah. Let's give this little baby a try out anyway. What are we going to have that on? Setting two, probably going to be too much for me because I like a bit of a chilly shower. But, you know, let's give it a rinse. There we go. Oh, let's bring the two together quite nicely. The electricalness, the, the electricalness as it's known, but also the, the sort of sleek, nice design, really sort of bringing that up. I quite like it, having a dual shower head. So if I actually want to sort of wash anywhere else, I'll spin that round to that. And there we go, look, it comes out. If you want that bit more of the body, or you can even have it on both. Look at that, you can't get it on both guys. So no, I'm more of a, a rain shower head dowsy man myself.